January 11, Mongol Arachne. Around 165 million years ago during the Jurassic period, a spider roughly the size of your face lived in what is now the autonomous region of Inner Mongolia in northern China. It's the largest fossilized spider ever found. Dubbed Mongolarachne jurassica, it was first described in 2013 by paleontologist Paul Selden after being dug up by farmers in a prehistoric fossil hotbed known as the Jiulongsheng Formation. Lots of cool stuff has been found here. Researchers have only ever found two specimens of this spider, one male and one female. It shocked scientists to realize that the male was bigger than the female, which rarely happens among spiders. You know, in most cases, it's the female that's huge. What makes the discovery even more unique is that most researchers typically find species that have similarly sized males and females in caves. Yet this spider was found in volcanic ash, near a former lake and far from any caves. This shows that the ancient spider may have lived in open or forested areas, but it's possible that it descended from a cave-dwelling species. It appears as though this specimen fell somewhere between primitive and modern spiders, according to Selden, who said that it was most likely capable of spinning large webs. This is a modern trait, as opposed to the earliest proto-spiders who could produce silk, but they didn't weave it. Spiders rarely appear in the fossil record, so it's entirely possible that it wasn't the largest prehistoric species or even the largest species of its era. Discoveries are still being made as technology improves, and because in some places amateur fossil hunters have found that they make more money selling fossils to museums and universities than they do at their day jobs. Number 10. Pulmonoscorpius kirktonensis Known less formally as the lung scorpion or the breathing scorpion, Pulmonoscorpius kirktonensis is an extinct species of a land scorpion that thrived during the Carboniferous period, sometime between 346 and 330 million years ago. Scientists discovered the creature's fossils in the Scottish county of West Lothian, at a former limestone quarry and fossil site called the East Kirkton Quarry. Based on the evidence, researchers believe it may have exceeded two feet in length. That's about the size of a golden retriever. Scientists are admittedly unsure of what the lung scorpion ate, but they suspect it had a powerful sting and may have preyed on smaller arthropods and insects, as well as small four-legged land mammals, amphibians, reptiles, and birds. Like several other creatures of the Carboniferous period, it's believed that the lung scorpion achieved its massive size primarily because of the high oxygen content in the air during its lifetime. Mostly it resembled a larger version of modern scorpions, although it had much bigger eyes, suggesting that it relied more heavily on its vision to hunt than scorpions do today. Number 9. Chimera Rachni Yingi In early 2018, scientists announced the discovery of an ancient proto-spider trapped in a 100-million-year-old block of amber. Dubbed Chimera Rachni Yingi, the creature had a tail, unlike its modern relatives. Researchers found the prehistoric specimen in a remote rainforest of Myanmar, a little studied area where scientists believe direct descendants of the species could still exist today because of its small size and its habitat, which human activity has not yet drastically altered. Dr. Paul Selden, who has studied many fossilized spiders, including this one, told the BBC that while it's unlikely, it's also possible. The creature's small size is one advantage that may have enabled it to persist into modern times. These creatures lived during the Cretaceous period, when some of the fiercest known dinosaurs like T. rex were known to walk the earth. It has a combination of ancient and modern features, which is why it's named after the Greek mythological hybrid creature known as the Chimera. While this mixture of traits isn't surprising, it was the first time scientists had observed a prehistoric spider with a tail, which made for a groundbreaking discovery. Researchers have not yet determined what the spider used the tail for, or if it was venomous. The species also had spinnerets, but couldn't weave its silk. As a relative of the most primitive living group of spiders that shares a common ancestor with today's arachnids, this spider has helped to fill a gap in the scientific understanding of how modern-day spiders evolved. Dr. Russell Garwood of the University of Manchester, a co-researcher on this study, said, We have known for a decade or so that spiders evolved from arachnids that had tails. 
more than 315 million years ago. We haven't found fossils before that showed this, and so finding this now was a huge but really fantastic surprise. Number 8. Laganome Gopidae 99 million years ago, a mother spider became encased in amber while protecting her offspring in the rainforest of what is now Myanmar. Scientists described the stunningly preserved specimen in a study last year, noting that observers can see the female clutching an egg sac filled with pre-hatchlings. She hailed from the now extinct Laganomogopidae family of spiders. Scientists found that ancient arachnids guarded their children closely after birth, and that their offspring stayed with them for some time. It's one of very few known fossilized examples of a spider showing motherly love. These spiders looked similar to modern jumping spiders, but aren't related to them and possess traits that suggest they were nocturnal. But science still has a long way to go in learning about prehistoric spiders, and the only way to do that is to make more discoveries. Experts are increasingly turning to the region where the mother spider was found, which is a hotbed for ancient fossils. The spider's feeding habits are unknown, but because they had such large eyes, scientists believe they were visual hunters. Experts also believe they had specialized diets. Because of this, if their prey became extinct, so would they. This is speculation, so they will probably never be able to test the theory. Scientists also believe that climate change could have been their downfall. Number 7. Anomalocaridid The arthropod phylum of invertebrates includes many modern-day creatures, including insects, centipedes, crabs, spiders, and other animals that have an exoskeleton, a segmented body, and paired jointed legs. Scientists believe modern arthropods descended from a common ancestor called the Anomalocaridid, a seven-foot-long creature that lived roughly 480 million years ago. A fossilized specimen found in the Sahara Desert of southeastern Morocco has offered some clues about this cryptic predecessor to modern-day bugs. This ancient creature lived during the Ordovician period, when the now very dry region was home to an inland sea on the supercontinent of Gondwana. Some creatures were just starting to walk on land, yet it's unclear how they evolved to have legs. Unlike earlier specimens, the most recently discovered fossil, found in 2015, shows that the ancient animal developed two sets of leg-like flaps that were used for swimming, that eventually developed into legs. Like many other prehistoric discoveries, the findings have helped scientists fit a new piece into the puzzle of how the first spiders on Earth developed. Number 6. Arthropleura Global temperatures were much higher 326 million years ago than they are now, making for a very different world where many places that have four seasons today were tropical. For example, what is now England saw warm temperatures year-round, and it was home to some unique, bizarre, and downright scary creatures, including the biggest animal in the world at the time. Arthropleura was also the largest bug that ever lived, resembling something straight out of a nightmare. This gigantic millipede measured around 8 feet long, weighed roughly 110 pounds, and had somewhere between 32 and 64 legs. To reach such a massive size, it ate a nutrient-rich diet of nuts and seeds, along with small amphibians and other creatures. A fossilized specimen that was discovered on a beach in Northumberland in 2018 was the third of its kind ever found, but it's much larger and older than the other two, which were unearthed in Germany. Scientists found the fossil in a chunk of sandstone that fell onto the land. They believe the site was once part of a river channel that no longer exists, and that the fossil may not encompass the millipede itself, but an exoskeleton that was shed when it was growing. Fossils like this are rare, according to Dr. Neil Davies, who told the BBC that because experts haven't found a fossilized arthropleura head, their knowledge of the creature remains limited. The recently discovered specimen will soon go on display in Cambridge. Number 5. Titanomerma The Titanomerma genus of gigantic prehistoric ants lived around 49.5 million years ago during the Eocene Epoch, measuring up to 6 centimeters long with a wingspan of up to 15 centimeters long, it was the largest ant species that ever lived. Examples of this and other similar species have been found in Germany as well as North America, showing that at the time, the climate was warm enough to facilitate the spread of large insects. In 2011, paleoentomologist Bruce Archibald reported the discovery of what he called a monstrously big ant. Found in the Green River Formation hotbed in the state of Wyoming, 
the creature measured roughly two inches long, roughly the length of a hummingbird. To Archibald's surprise, it had been sitting in a drawer unnoticed for quite some time at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. He immediately recognized it as a giant prehistoric ant that was likely related to the well-known fossilized specimens from Germany. Dubbed T. Lube, the creature's survival required a warm climate, much like today's giant ants. It lived between 56 and 34 million years ago, when the continents were much closer together and the climate was tropical in the regions where it lived. In Archibald's words, you could have walked from Vancouver to London on dry land. Traversing continents still required crossing through the Arctic, but during this time period, the region was temperate. Because of this, scientists believe Titanomerma crossed between Europe and North America via an Eocene-era land bridge. Number 4. Jacolopterus Jacolopterus is an extinct genus of Eurypterid, or a sea scorpion, which sprang into existence during the early Devonian period of the Paleozoic era, between around 410 and 406 million years ago. There were two species known as J. renaniae and J. Haweli. J. renaniae fossils were first discovered in Germany in 2007. It lived in the Rhineland region in the western part of the country, from brackish to freshwater. Evidence suggests that this species grew between 7.5 and 8.5 feet long. Just one of its pincers measured over 18 inches long. It's the largest arthropod ever discovered, and it dominated the seas until the Permian extinction roughly 250 million years ago. Despite its size, it was lightly built and was probably not one of the heaviest arthropods. J. Haweli lived in the brackish estuaries in the state of Wyoming and was considerably smaller, measuring just 2.6 feet long. There are geologists who believe that because there were higher levels of oxygen so long ago, it caused giant arthropods to evolve. There are others that think a kind of arms race with their likely prey, the early armored fish, caused the evolution. They had to keep up. Number 3. Megarachne Back in 1980, paleontologist Mario Hunnikin claimed to have identified the biggest spider that ever existed. He called it the Megarachne and estimated that its body was at least a foot long and that it had a leg span of around 19 inches. These measurements were based on partial fossils that were found in a 300 million year old rock in Argentina. Imagine a spider the size of your arm. Museums around the world classified the Megarachne cervine as the largest spider of all time. But something was wrong with the original find of the Megarachne. The partial fossils that Hunikin was talking about seemed a lot like a spider, but it was missing things a spider should have. I mean, it's hard to recreate what creatures really look like when you only have bits and pieces. So, scientists tried to take another look at the giant spider, but the original specimen was now hidden away in a bank vault. Nobody was able to view the specimen until 2005, along with a newly discovered megarachne fossil. A group of researchers published a paper arguing that the creature was a eurypterid, or a sea scorpion, rather than a spider. It was an aquatic creature, and it was almost two feet long. It certainly wasn't small, but its reclassification as a sea scorpion meant it was medium-sized compared to other specimens of its kind, and this giant spider was no more. The BBC documentary Before the Dinosaurs Walking with Monsters actually included the spider, but at the last minute they had to change it to a smaller spider when the news came out. Number 2. Euphoberia The extinct Euphoberia genus of millipedes was much like modern versions of the bug in shape and behavior, but it was much larger, growing up to 3 feet long. It existed in what is now North America and Europe between 323 and 299 million years ago, during the late Carboniferous period. During this time, the world was unimaginably different from what it is now. The continents were much closer together, with the land masses that eventually became the eastern US and northern Europe situated along the equator, while China and Siberia sat at high latitudes in the northern hemisphere. Scientists don't know what the gargantuan millipede ate, but they have an idea based on the diet of the largest modern centipedes, which feast on animals as large as birds, bats, and snakes. And while today's centipedes only reach up to 10 inches long, one can only imagine what a prehistoric creature over three times the size ate. Their modern cousin, the Amazonian giant centipede, has been seen feasting on bats. They climb the walls of caves and grab the bats with their front legs. They use their back legs to cling to the cave wall. They can hold on for a really long time while they are munching on their prey. 
Although the venom paralyzes the prey, it's not deadly to humans, but it hurts like a bee sting. Number 1. Mega Neuropsis The dragonfly-like Mega Neuropsis is the largest known insect of all time. This extinct genus of griffin fly lived in what's now the central United States during the Permian period, between 317 million and 247 million years ago. There were two described Meganeropsis species. Meganeropsis permiana was discovered in Elmo, Kansas in 1939 as a partial wing fossil. It had an estimated wingspan of nearly 30 inches, or around two and a half feet which is comparable to that of a modern-day hawk. M. americana was essentially the junior version of M. permiana. Scientists discovered it in Midgo, Oklahoma in 1940. A four-wing fragment that was preserved at Harvard University's Museum of Comparative Zoology measures 11 inches long, along with a complete reconstructed wing measuring 12 inches. It had an estimated wingspan of 27 inches. Both species resembled the dragonfly but were only distantly related primitive versions of it. They existed long before birds, bats, and dinosaurs roamed the earth. Meganeropsis possessed a pair of powerful toothed mandibles, suggesting that it was highly predaceous and was uncharacteristically tough for a bug. Meganeropsis ceased to exist at the end of the Permian the victim of a mass extinction that obliterated more than 90% of all life on Earth. With this catastrophic event, the high oxygen levels were gone, and no insect would ever reach that size again. Thanks for watching! Would you rather face one giant spider or a bunch of small venomous snakes? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe for more videos like these! See you soon! Bye!